Hello everyone, welcome to a little bit of a different kind of video. I'm going to be showing you all how you can use HLSL with Vulkan. And this is going to be the first video in what is going to become a series of videos talking about how to use HLSL with Vulkan because I started recording this and planning it out today and it turned out that it just started ballooning way larger than I thought it was going to be. Anyways, let's get past that and just start with what is relevant. So the first thing that you're going to realize when you go to use HLSL with Vulkan is that you need something to compile the HLSL with. And you can use Spurvy Cross, I believe, to compile HLSL, HLSL, but from what I've found is it's a bit buggy and really hard to use. So what is a little less buggy is the DirectX HLSL compiler. And I believe it was Google actually that came in and created a HLSL to Spurvy port for DXC or the DirectX shader compiler so that they could use it with Stadia. And so using HLSL with Spurvy and Vulkan is a pretty niche use case, but um, it's really the only viable option, HLSL that is, for writing a large shader code base because once you start writing more and more code, you realize how cumbersome GLSL is. So let's get started. Now, DXC is a library and it's actually really, really large. So we wouldn't want to compile it ourselves unless we really needed to. And on their GitHub page, they actually provide pre-built binaries, but only for Windows. So I can set it up for in the future to work on Linux, but for now, this is a solution that only works on Windows. The solution that we implement here is going to be cross-platform, but the utilities that we use won't work on Linux. And these are utilities that I've created so that we can do this. And I can just update those utilities in the future to also support Linux, and you wouldn't have to change anything. All right, DXC uses CMake to compile its code, and so we could use CMake to build the binaries for us, but instead what I currently do is I just pull in the binaries from the GitHub page. And the way that I do that is through a utility for the C++ build system that is becoming more and more widely adopted known as VC package, which is a C++ package manager developed to work natively with CMake by Microsoft. So let's start setting up our VC package project. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a VC package.json. This is just a little configuration file to tell VC package about our project. Now, this is known as a manifest file within the VC package uh, ecosystem. So if you want to look more into it, that's what you want to search up. But all we really want to do in here is specify that we want to use the DXC package. This is required for VC package. I'm going to specify a name of our project, which I'm just going to call demo, or maybe I guess DXC demo. And then we have to specify a version of our project. It can be literally anything. I'm just going to say 0.1.0. And then we can specify the dependencies that we want. And this is a um, within JSON a, in, in a list. So we use square brackets to denote it. And then we can just add in an object. This object describes a package, but it can automatically be created from just a string, which in this case is just the name of DXC. So if we wanted to make this uh, the full object, we would say name <clears throat> is DXC. And this would have the exact same effect. But what this allows us to do is request specific features about the about the package and other things that we want. So this would be something to look into if you wanted to know more about VC package manifests. But we don't need to do this. We can just specify DXC and it'll automatically create that object for us. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to have to create a VC package configuration file. And the reason for this is that there is no DXC package within VC package. They don't have what they call port 
for DXC. <clears throat> so what I did is I went ahead and created one. So I created a GitHub repository that we can point to from our configuration file that within the contents will be able to tell VC package how to download the pre-compiled binaries and how to create how to create the CMake libraries for us as well, the CMake targets. All right. So what this extension of the VC package repository list is called is a registry. So we're going to create a registries field within our global object. And this registries field is a list just like before. And so we're going to create an object. This is our registry object and we call it a, we specify that the type is a git registry. We specify that the repository is at this specific link, which is a link to my GitHub page for this registry. We specify the baseline, which is this commit SHA. And this SHA is relative to this repository, not DXC or anything. And then we specify the packages from within that repository that we want to grab. So we will specify another list here and DXC is going to be coming from there. And then we're going to create a, now that we have the VC package information set up, we can go ahead and create a CMake lists. And within that, we're going to create a really quick boilerplate project. I specify the version and the project name call this DXC demo. And then I want to create an application or an executable. So I'll do that here. I sp say that I have this executable demo main. It uses main.cpp and that it's C++ 20 standard. And that's because we're just going to use some utilities. So you could write this however you want. I'm just saying that for the explanation as to why that's there. But what we can do now in the CMake is say, find package DXC and it's a config mode package and it's required. And then we can link to it DXC colon colon DXC from main. Lastly, with our project configuration, we need one more file for CMake, which is the CMake presets.json file. And in here, we're gonna specify the VC package CMake toolchain file. I'm just going to paste this in here and I'll go over it. So we just specify the presets version. This is like the schema version of this presets file. And then we specify our CMake version. 3.21 is a pretty new version, but it's not the latest. And then I can specify a preset name, the directory to generate those build files. So I'm going to say within this directory, I want a subdirectory build and then a directory that is the same name as the preset name. And then I'm going to query the environment variable VC package root and extend the relative path to that uh, to VC package CMake and also use the Ninja generator. And that's all we have to do in order to get our project completely set up. Now I'm gonna create our C++ file. Let's just make a main function and make sure that everything runs. So I'm just gonna say standard C out Hello world. And now what I can do, because I'm in Visual Studio Code, is go ahead and try and build it. So if I press F7, our CMake extension will say, select a configure preset. This is the preset that we set up in the CMake presets.json. See, this is main. And we can see that uh, VC package failed because I accidentally put an underscore in my package name, which is not allowed. So whoops. And now you can see that it's going ahead and pulling in the VC package registry. And then once it finished that, it tells us that we can use CMake to link against this library. So we can find the library, the config module, and, the, um, and then link to this specific target, DXC. And we can see that it finished with exit code zero. So I'm really quickly just going to paste in this launch.json file at .vs code launch.json that allows me to launch a CMake project from VS code in the debugger. That happens by running this command, cmake.launch target path, which is this play button down here 
for CMake. But what it does is because the, this is an extension command is if this launch target path doesn't exist, which would be build main uh, demo main.exe, the CMake extension itself will run the configuration and build in order to create that and then launch that, attach the debugger there. And then I just say that the working directory is the workspace folder. All right. So now I can press F5 and it will launch and we can see hello world. All right. So we've got it set up. Correct. So now I'm just going to set up a really simple DXC project to generate SPURV. So I'm going to include DXC API.h. And what's really annoying about DXC API Dot h is that it requires some windows utilities so if i press f5 here we'll see that it actually fails to build and the reason being is that there are a bunch of windows types that are uh, non-existent at this point so if i include dxe api.h i also need to include windows.h and when i do this i always define no min max and just for good measure you might as well say also um, win32 lean and mean this just makes it so that windows.h doesn't include a bunch of unnecessary headers, reducing your compile times. There are a couple other headers that I want. I'm just gonna paste them in because it's not really relevant, but now I can create some, instead of loading some HLSL file, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna show you at the most basic level, how to generate spurvies from some HLSL text. So I'm just gonna create a string that has some HLSL and this is an empty compute shader. So it specifies its number of threads um, and takes in the dispatch thread ID, but doesn't do anything. This is technically a valid compute program, but it's it obviously doesn't do anything. Now we're gonna create an instance of the compiler. And to do that, we create a couple objects, a com pointer of IDXC utils, which is an interface struct and a com pointer to an IDXC compiler three, and then we just initialize those. I grab the address of the compiler and also get the address of DXC utils. And I specify these two IDs as to what kind of instance we want to create. A com pointer, however, is within the WRL slash client header. And it's also under another namespace. So we're going to have to include that as well. So now that we've created the compiler, what we can do is we can create a buffer of the source code. So here's our source buffer that has this HLSL string, a pointer to it. So we grab the first character, an iterator to the first character, dereference it, and then get the memory address of it. That's basically just a pointer to a string view. And then what we do is we grab the size of that string as well. The encoding is the default encoding because it's ASCII. And then what we want to do is run this compile method on our DXC compiler. And we need this result variable, which is another com pointer to an interface to be the output basically of this compile operation, because this function returns an H result, which we could check for errors, but I'll leave that up to you guys. And you can see, I also have this args parameter, which, um, is like a, uh, in a, an array of wide C strings that you would specify usually on the command line for DXC. So here are compiler args. We're going to first say that our matrices are column major. That's just a personal preference thing. You don't have to do that. Then I'm going to say the HLSL version is 2021. And then the shader type is a compute shader 6.0. And then the entry point is main and that it's spurvy and we're going to target SPURV environment of Vulkan 1.1. And this is the SPURV target, not really the um, Vulkan version, I believe, not as opposed to like Vulkan 1.3, but I could be wrong about that. And then what we want to do is extract the shader object out of this uh, result variable. So this is a DXC blob. It's just like a a buffer pointer wrapper, I guess. So this is the output object of the result. And now we have the resulting quote unquote object file of the SPURV. And what we can do is we can create a buffer from that of UNT32s because SPURV bytecode is code bytes of 32 bits as opposed to actual bytes. And then I get the size of the buffer, which is 
in bytes and divide it by the size of a uh, uint32t. And then I'm just gonna loop over all of the indices within that buffer and extract the bytecode from it. So I can get this uint, I can then insert it into the buffer, and I'm also just gonna print it so that you guys can see it. So I'll add a little bit of debug printing above and below. And so now if we run our program, what we'll see is a compile error. <laughs> Maybe we can't use 132 lean and mean. Looks like we can't use win32 lean and mean because it removes the include of unknown.h. Now we can see all of the Spurvy instructions for this really simple program that we created. And that's about it. So in the next video, I'll probably be getting more involved with how to set up uh, this with an actual Vulkan project, but I just wanted to get this video out about how you can use my VC package registry to build a project with DXC. All right. Thank you all for watching.